a worthy destination. Once a person fully understands that the goals that are important to him can become real in his life, well, it's like opening a jack-in-the-box. All sorts of interesting and exciting things begin to happen. Quite often, we become truly alive for the first time in our lives. We look back at our former lives and realize we were shuffling along in a kind of lockstep, that we were actually taking our cues from those about us in the unspoken assumption that we're all alike when nothing could be farther from the truth. We are not all alike. Each of us is quite different with different abilities, different or genetic profiles, and different ones in life. What would wonderfully satisfy one family and, and represent complete success for them would be considered failure by another family, all because of their different aspirations, their different plateaus in life, the differences in their life or lifestyles, upbringings, and education. When we're youngsters, every facet of our environment has an effect upon us and helps to set our course in life. The youngster who knew poverty as a child might aspire to be rich. He might overcompensate because of the desolation of his youth. While another young person who was raised in an upper middle class family and who always had just about everything he wanted might settle for a very middle class adulthood. Things we've always had aren't as important to us as they are to those who have been without them. On the preceding message, we talked about freedom and about how dear it is to those who never had it. Well, most Americans take it for granted and they never even think about it. If you ask most Americans what the most important thing in the world is for a human being, chances are they would seldom come up with freedom, freedom to set their own goals in life. Yet as Archibald MacLeish wrote in his fine play, The Secret of Freedom, the secret of happiness is freedom, and the secret of freedom, courage. To understand the subject and the importance of goal setting, we have to realize that it is the very basis of any success. It is, in fact, the very definition of success. The best definition of success I've ever found goes like this. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy goal, or in some cases, the pursuit of a worthy ideal. If you'll give this definition some thought, I think you'll agree with me. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy goal. That's a beautiful definition of success. It means that anyone who's on course toward the fulfillment of a goal is successful now. Success does not lie in the achievement of a goal, although that's what the world considers success. It lies in the journey toward the goal. We are successful as long as we are working towards something we want to bring about in our lives. That's when the human being is at his best. That's what Cervantes meant when he wrote, the road is better than the end. Quite often, romantic stories end with a loving couple getting married. That's just the beginning of the story. When the young person stands before his school's president or principal and receives the diploma, that's called commencement. That's the beginning. It's an important milestone to be sure, and congratulations are certainly in order. But where is he going from there? Once a person has realized the goal for which he has so assiduously toiled, that's wonderful. It's time for a rest and some self-congratulations. Time to savor the achievement. But my definition, we're no longer successful until we set a new, higher goal toward which we work. We're at our best when we're climbing, thinking, planning, and working. When we're on the road to something we want to bring about. By this, we don't mean that we should become workaholics. Far from it. In fact, it's been well established that the most successful men and women manage to live in a wonderful state of balance. They have lots of recreation and they get lots of rest. The mind works best when we're properly rested and the mind is the best and most important part of us, regardless of what we choose to do. Have you heard an athlete say it's about 90% mental? Whatever the percentage really is in a good game of golf or tennis, it's very large. As we pointed out in the magic word, our mental attitude can make all the difference between winning and losing. 
with our definition of success as the progressive realization of a worthy goal, we cover all the bases. The young person working to finish school is as successful as any person on earth. The person working toward a particular position with this company is just as successful. If you have a goal that you find worthy of you as a person, a goal that fills you with joy at the thought of it, believe me, you'll reach it. But as you draw near and see the, that the goal will soon be achieved, begin to think or think ahead to the next goal you're going to set. It often happens that halfway through a book, a writer will hit upon the idea for the next one and begin making notes or come up with ideas for a little or a title, even while he's finishing work on the book in progress. That's the way it should be. One of my favorite poems is by Rabindranath Tagore, the distinguished poet from Calcutta, India, and it goes like this. I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I walked and saw that life was duty. I acted and behold, duty was joy. We are at our very best and we are happiest when we are fully engaged in work we enjoy on the journey toward the goal we've established for ourselves. It gives meaning to our time off and comfort to our sleep. It makes everything else in life so wonderful so worthwhile.